we'd like to do in today's lesson is to take our general quadratic uh, formula for the uh, function y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where of course a is not equal to zero. And what we'd like to do is to translate it into the pattern as we had in yesterday's lesson so that we can go ahead and make its graph very easily, all right? And the pattern, if you recall, that we ended up with yesterday was what? A times, and how then did we write that, Steve? X plus or minus. Well, let's see, now we're just thinking right, X now in terms H. of the formula. Steve? X, yeah. X minus H. X minus H. All squared plus K. Plus K, all right? In which uh, H comma K was the vertex point of our, of our graph. Is that right? Well, Let's look at a number of examples and see how <coughs> this idea will unfold, all right? And here we have a, uh, a formula for a function, y is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 14, all right? And just looking at that, let's try to get it into the same pattern as we have just said, in which we have here x squared minus 8x plus, and now let's complete that square. So what number do I want to add here in order to make this into a perfect square, Doug? plus 16. Does everyone agree with that? All right, now, if I were to add that number 16, at the same time, let me simply subtract 16 and then add the number 14 that we started with, all right? So that we have here negative 16 plus 14, which of course is what? Negative two. And now looking at to what we have in parentheses here, this may be written as what? Then we have what? X minus, minus four. four, the quantity okay. squared, minus 2. And here then is the pattern that we are looking for. And what is the equation of the axis of <coughs> symmetry? Just looking at this pattern, what is the, that equation, Doug? X equals 4. X then is equal to 4. Let's then make the graph of this. 1, 2, 3, 4. X is equal to 4 is going to be this vertical line. Does everyone agree with that? Let me include this as a dotted line. And what then is the vertex point going to be? And it's going to have coordinates of what? Done? 4 comma minus 2. 4 comma negative 2. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 comma negative 2 is this point. Now let's think in terms of a new set of coordinate axes, if we may, right at that point, all right? At that vertex point of 4 comma negative 2. And we're now thinking in terms of simply the function of the pattern x squared. Is that right? Uh, at which this is then the vertex point. So in other words, from this point, let's decide to go one unit to the right, and that number squared is one squared is one, negative one squared is one, two squared is four, four. one, two, three, four, negative two squared is four, and of course three squared is nine, nine. so it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This point must be on the graph because of the symmetry. This point must be on the graph. And now notice we have there a sufficient number of points in order to make a nice smooth curve through those points. And our graph then is going to look something like this. And, uh, and we're done. There is the graph then of x squared minus 8x plus 14. If you then were to try to graph that, you'd simply want to plot a lot of points. But if you get it into this, uh, into this completed square form, in fact, it falls out very nicely. Let's look at another example and see how this one might go. Here we have 2x squared. Y then is equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 9. Well, in this case, let's then think in terms of factoring out that number 2, which is the number a in our general case. And if we were to do so, we have left what? x squared plus now 2 times what number is 8x? 4x. Now let's complete the square right here. And what number then, then would we like to add in order to make this into a perfect square, Glenn? Plus 4. Plus 4. Now, we're really not adding 4 here because we really have 2 times 4, which is 8. eight. <coughs> and we started out with 9, so what number then do we want to add here in order to get this sentence equivalent to the first sentence? We would like to add, Kirby? 1. Simply the number 1. All right? Now, looking at this pattern, you see there are two times, and now let's write this as a perfect square, which is, huh? X plus two squared. X plus two, the quantity squared, plus one. And now here, then, is our pattern in which we can easily make this <coughs> graph. What is the axis of symmetry? What's the equation of the axis of symmetry, Dick? Negative two. X, then, is equal to negative two. Let's then make that uh, vertical line on our coordinate system. 
so that this then is going to give us our axis of symmetry. What then is the vertex point? What are the coordinates of the vertex point? Simply looking at this, Gwen? Negative 2, comma 1. Negative 2, comma 1 is then going to be this point right here. We now have to take into consideration the, the coefficient of 2. Is our curve going to be concave up or down? And it's going to be, Doug? Up. It's going to be concave up. And the fact that we have this coefficient 2 here tells us if we come to the right one unit, we must go then go up how many units? Two. two. Is that right? Because one squared is one times two is two. This point must be on the graph. We come to the left one unit and come up two units. This point must be on the graph. If we go to the right two units, how many units must we then go up? Eight. 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 Is that right? Uh, two squared is four, and four times two then is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This point must be on the graph. And I think you'll agree that this point must be on the graph. And notice then that through these points, we can make a nice smooth curve, which is then going to give us our graph. And the fact that we have that coefficient of 2 is going to make the curve a bit more narrow. Is that right? And right here then, we're done. We have then the graph of the, the function whose formula is y is equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 9. <coughs> Again, let me emphasize that if you have to start from that pattern, I think perhaps it might take a little bit of time and effort in order to be able to make this graph. And as soon as you get it into this completed square pattern, notice how easily it, uh, it comes out. Let's look at a third example. Here we have y then is equal to a negative 2x squared minus 6x plus 3. Well, let's go through the same procedure. Let's take out that common factor of a negative 2, or this, this coefficient of negative 2. And we have here what? x squared. And then what number do we want to have here? Negative 2 times what number is a negative 6x? We have there, Bill? Uh, it's, uh, negative 3. Well, it's you know, negative times oh, negative, right, then right, it's right, a positive. Three, yeah. It then is going to be what? A plus 3x. Now notice here, let's complete this square. And when we do so, we are looking at this coefficient of 3. And when that square is completed, Doug? 9 fourths. It then is going to be the number 9 fourths. Does everyone agree with that? <coughs> now, negative 2 times 9 fourths is really what number? Is negative what? There's a, well, it's a negative 9 halves. And so if we then were to sub have subtracted that number 9 halves, let's then add 9 halves, and then the original number 3 that we have here, and I think we're back to and a sentence which is equivalent to the original one. Is that right? Now let's clean that one up a little bit. There's a negative 2 times, and now let's uh, write this as a completed square, and what then do we have there? Uh, Brenda? X plus 3 halves. X plus 3 halves. The quantity squared. The quantity squared. Plus 15 halves. Plus, and here we have uh, 15 halves. Does everyone agree with that? 9 halves plus 6 halves then is 15 halves. And notice here in this example, we happen to have ended up with some uh, fractions here, 3 halves and 15 halves. That shouldn't disturb us. What then is the, uh, the vertex point? What are the coordinates of the vertex, Doug? Uh, the vertex would be negative 3 halves, 15 halves. Negative 3 halves and 15 halves, is that right? <coughs> now, uh, the axis of symmetry, of course, is going to be where? At uh, x is... Malcolm? Negative x then is equal to a negative 3 halves. That's a negative uh, 1 and a half. So let's include a line, a vertical line. Let me make this a dotted line. Passing through x is negative 3 halves. And then you say that the uh, vertex point will have what? A y value of, of uh, 15 halves, all right? Which is what? Seven About 7 and a half. half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and a half. And right there, then, is going to be the vertex point. Now, notice here our coefficient of a is negative 2. Is our curve going to be uh, concave up or down? And Don? Down. It's going to be concave down. The fact that it is a coefficient of 2 is going to make it somewhat narrow. Is that right? Again, thinking of a new set of coordinates right there at that point, if we come to the right one unit, how many units then are we going to come down? Two, two units. So there's <coughs> one, two, that is going to give us this point. Therefore, this point must also be on our graph. If we come to the right two units, how many units must we come down? But eight. 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 Is that right? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is then going to give us this point, and I believe you'll agree that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
two will be a point right about here, which is its corresponding point. And now I think through these points we can make a nice smooth curve in which the graph is going to look something like this. And we're done. There then is the graph of this uh, function, y is equal to negative 2x squared <coughs> minus 6x plus 3. Again, let me emphasize, if you started from that and tried to make its graph, I think you have a little bit of work on your hands by a rather sim simple uh, uh, method of getting this into another pattern, we then can graph it very easily. Well, let's look at, a, uh, at an example in which we have here a problem. Number four, in which we have a wire 16 inches long is cut into two pieces, and each piece is bent into a square, okay? Where should the wire be cut if the total area of the square is to be a minimum? And then what is this minimum area? Well, let's make a picture for ourselves. Here we have a piece of wire which is 16 units long, all right, in this case inches. And somewhere we want to cut this wire. We don't know exactly where. Let's say that right here at some point we're going to cut the wire so that we then will take this piece and make it into a square. We'll bend it into the form of a square, and then that piece will make another square, all right? Now, let's decide on some unit of measure such that this side then is, say, of length x. So if this side is of length x, therefore, this length from here to here will be of length what, Brenda? Four. We have 4x, and then, of course, this length is then going to be what number, Kirby? 16 minus 4. There we have 16 <coughs> minus 4x. Of course, then, what is the, uh, the width that we have here of our little square? But, uh, or I don't know if it's the little one, but of the other square, it's going to be, Brenda? 4 minus x. There you have 4 minus x. Does everyone agree with that? Now, what then is the area of this square that we see here? But, uh, well, it's of length x, it's a square, so it will have an area, Doug, x squared. of x squared. Let's talk about a of x, all right? And write a formula for this function that we're now going to generate. a of x then is going to be equal to this area, which is what number, Doug? x squared. x squared, and then plus this number, which is going to be, Doug? Uh, four, the quantity 4 minus the quantity for minus x squared. Does everyone agree with that? Now, let's simplify this uh, formula somewhat. We have x squared plus, and when we multiply this out, we have what? 16 uh, minus an 8x plus an x squared. When we simplify this x squared, there's a what? A 2x squared minus an 8x plus 16. And notice here we have a of x then is equal to this, in which this is what kind of a formula? What kind of a function is this? It's certainly quadratic. Let's do exactly what we have done in the other examples. Let's make its graph. By doing so, we'll complete the square. If we factor out the number 2, we have x squared minus 4x plus what number? Four. Plus 4. Is that right? And now 2 times 4 is 8 plus what number? We'll get me back to where we started, but uh, the number 8, is that right? So we have here 2 times x minus 2 to the quantity squared plus 8. Now, let's make this graph on a coordinate axis, all right, in which we have here uh, the axis of symmetry is what? Let me repeat our formula, if I may, over here in our coordinate axis. We have a of x then is equal to 2 times x minus 2 to the quantity squared plus 8. And the axis of symmetry is that, Doug? x is equal to 2. Let's include that on our graph as a dotted line, a vertical line. x then is equal to 2. And of course, the uh, vertex point is going to have coordinates of what, Dick? 2, 8. 2, comma, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is then going to give us this vertex point. And the fact that we have a coefficient of 2 here is going to make it what? Concave up. Is that right? And the fact that it is a coefficient of 2, it's then going to be somewhat narrow. So if we come one unit to the right, we then must go up how many units? Two. 2 is then this point, and negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, which is this point. And if x is, if we come out here 2 units, we must then go up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then, in fact, I think you'll agree that this point must be on the graph. Through these points, then, we can make a nice smooth curve in which this, then, is a formula for this function that we have just generated. Now, let's interpret this in terms of the original problem. 
And notice what we have along our x-axis here. These are the various numbers for x. By the way, I shouldn't have put arrows on here because we're dealing with a physical situation in which, uh, let's come back here to the original conditions. The number for x can certainly, must be where? Between what two values? Uh, this certainly can come down here in which, uh, x, if x were over here, what are our restrictions on 4x, in other words? 4x must be between where and where? It must be greater than or equal to, Don? Zero. Greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to, Don? Uh, 16. Therefore, if we were to simply divide through here by the number 4, we'll have x then is, must be a number between 0 and what? 4. So let's then come back to our coordinate axes. And if x is uh, 0, the most that we can have on our graph then is going to be uh, at this point, and in fact, at this point right here. So indeed, uh, let's have simply a, uh, a heavy dot there to indicate those two points are on the graph, but it doesn't go any higher than that, okay? Now, let's interpret this, uh, this graph in terms of the conditions of the problem. These are the values for x that we may have where we're going to cut this, uh, this wire, going from 0 to 4, is that right? Now, what value of x then is going to minimize this function? And just looking at it, uh, we can read that right off the graph, Kirby, two. when x is 2. And in fact, when x is 2, what then is the value of that function? What is the area when x is 2? And just looking at it, we can see that it must be what number? Charles? 8. At 8, is that right? So when, when, the, uh, when x is 2, the area function is going to be up at 8. Let's come back here to our original problem and see if indeed that makes sense. When x is 2, 4 times 2 is where we're going to actually going to make that cut, is going to have what value? it then will be at 8. And in fact, when x is 8, that is when we make the cut 8 inches across, where will it be in relation to the wire? It will be at its, uh, at its midpoint. Now, in fact, if you, if you thought about this a little bit more, let's come back to our picture. If x were 0, that is, you didn't make any cut at all, all right, you left the wire of one length, and then bent that into a square, that then would give you the maximum uh, area, wouldn't it? You'd have that one piece of wire in which it would be a square. What would be the area of that square? At that point, it would have a what area? From here up to there is a what number? What length? 16. 16. That would be the area. And of course, if you then, uh, say, cut it at the other end, so to speak, uh, or make no cut at all again, its area would be what number? 16. That would be its maximum. Any number in between is then not going to give you either maximum or minimum, but in fact, the minimum will be right at the midpoint, okay? So, I think that there are many problems of this type that, will, uh, that you can do by means of this quadratic function. Let me then give you your homework assignment, and I think that's all that we need to do for today.